Welcome. This video is about California paid family leave for caregivers and workplace rights. This is brought to you by the California Work and Family Coalition. The coalition is a statewide alliance of organizations united in the belief that all people should have the time and resources to care for themselves and each other. My name is Charlotte Flanders. I'm part of coalition staff, and I'm here today with my colleague Angelica Andrade to present to you on Know Your Rights. In California, there are laws that support workers when they need to care for a loved one. It is important to learn about wage replacement programs and job protection laws. If a worker is eligible and meets the requirements, they can take paid family leave and have their right to return to work after their leave. This video will help you understand the requirements of paid family leave, PFO, and California Rights Act, CIFRA, and how they work together. Let's begin with paid family leave for caregiving. While on leave in California, how do I get paid? Paid family leave and disability insurance are like two halves of a whole. They are both wage replacement programs funded by the California State Disability Insurance Fund, which is funded through employee contributions, your money. In California, we have pay for when you can't work if you are pregnant, disabled, caring for a family member, or bonding with a new child. As you see in the graphic, California Disability Insurance Fund is the program, and the two halves of the whole is the disability insurance and paid family leave. What makes these two different is the reason why you are taking leave. As you see in the yellow and for disability insurance, you would take disability insurance for your own serious health condition or pregnancy-related condition. In the red is paid family leave, and you would take paid family leave for bonding with a new child, caring for a seriously ill family member, and preparing for a military exigency. We do have other short videos on your own serious health condition for pregnant parents and for non-pregnant parents bonding with a new child. But for this video today, we're focusing on caregivers. Eligibility Requirements for Paid Family Leave and Disability Insurance. These two programs have similar requirements for the first two reasons. One is paying into state disability insurance, SDI, and the second reason would be earned at least 300 from which SDI deductions were withheld during a base period. We have hyperlinked here the EDD calculator, Employment Development Calculator, to help you understand your contributions during a base period and the amount you would get during this time. We have various resources that are hyperlinked throughout this video, and the slides will be available to you to be able to click on these resources. Now, what differs for eligibility requirements for PFL and SDI is the reason why you're taking leave. For paid family leave, an eligibility requirement to take this leave is that you have a new child or need to care for a seriously ill family member. How do I know if I'm contributing to SDI? So the simplest way to know is to check your pay stub. And if you see here, this is a sample of a pay stub. And if you look at your pay stub and in the red box, you would try to find the words of CA state disability insurance or sometimes reference as CA SDI. And this means that you're contributing to the fund and you're eligible. Qualifying reasons for paid family leave PFO. Paid family leave provides partial pay for the following qualifying reasons. For caregivers to care for a seriously ill family member, the family member must be the caregiver's child, spouse, domestic partner, parent, grandparent, grandchild, parent-in-law, or sibling. And you can also take PFL to bond with a new child. While on paid family leave, you would receive partial wage replacement, 60 or 70% of your normal weekly wages up to 1,540 per week in 2022. 60 or 70% is determined based on your income and the employment development department would determine that during your application. You would receive paid family leave for up to eight weeks. These eight weeks can be taken all at once or in parts, either hourly, daily, or weekly. You can apply through the EDD website within 41 days or later with a good cause. One frequently asked question we receive is, does an employee have to work a minimum number of hours or days before becoming eligible for paid family leave or state disability insurance benefits? No, you do not have to work a minimum number of hours or days to be eligible for PFL or SDI benefits. The amount of benefits you received is determined by your earnings in a base period, not by the number of hours or days you have worked. Again, we have hyperlinked here the EDD calculator to help you calculate your benefit amount. It's important to note that citizenship and immigration status do not affect eligibility of paid family leave and state disability insurance benefits. 
paid family leave for caregiving application, you would go to eddca.gov, as you see here in the sticky note, to create a one-time benefits program online account on the EDD website. You can apply for caregiving either online or by mail. The application will require documents from a physician or medical provider to verify that you are the caregiver. There are other required documents, so please read the application carefully. Write down the form receipt number found on the confirmation page after completing the application. It's important to write this number down as it will help you keep track of your application through this process. For workers that are not eligible for paid family leave, there are organizations that do not automatically pay into CASDI, California State Disability Insurance, as they may have their own paid leave program at their workplace. Some of these workers are government or federal workers, independent contractors, self-employed, or freelance employees. It's best to speak to a human resources or union representative to understand your paid leave rights at your job if you are not eligible for CASDI. But there are ways to opt into CASDI through the Disability Insurance Elective Coverage Program, and for more information about this is hyperlinked on this slide. It's important to note that paid family leave and disability insurance are wage replacement programs only. They do not require your employer to give you your job back when you return from leave. With that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Angelica, to help us understand job protection. Okay, so now that Charlotte has gone over paid family leave, or in other words, wage replacement, we are going to talk about job protection. So how do I protect my job while on paid family leave for caregiving? There are state and federal laws that protect your job while you are on leave. Your employer is only required to protect your job if you are covered by the state and or federal laws. If you qualify for job protection, your employer must guarantee your job or a comparable job when you return from leave and maintain your benefits during leave. Refusing your request for leave or retaliating against you for using or attempting to use leave is also prohibited. Here you can see state versus federal job protection laws. On one side, you can see the state of California where we have the California Family Rights Act, also known as CIFRA. We also have pregnancy disability leave, also known as PDL, and this applies to California only. On the other side, you see all of the United States where we have the Family Medical Leave Act, also known as FMLA, and this applies to all of the United States. However, in this video, we will focus on CIFRA because it is a stronger law than FMLA. CIFRA covers and protects more California workers. The qualifying reasons under the California Family Rights Act are that you are taking time off to care for a seriously ill family member defined as children, spouses, domestic partners, parents, grandparents, grandchildren, parent-in-law, siblings, and a designated person. New rights under CIFRA as of January 1, 2023. California caregivers who qualify for CIFRA will be able to take caregiving leave for a seriously ill designated person, in addition to listed family members who they will designate when they request leave from their employers. The designated person can be any individual related by blood or whose association with the employee is the equivalent of a family relationship. Examples of who you could designate are your best friend, your uncle, uncle, your partner who you are not legally married to, a person who is a part of your chosen or extended family. It is important to note that an employer can limit an employee to one designated person per 12-month period, but you don't have to decide ahead of time who your designated person is. So for example, if your aunt receives a cancer diagnosis and needs you to care for her, you can designate her as your designated person when you request leave from your employer. Caregiving leave for a designated person would be unpaid but job protected for up to 12 weeks. To use this leave, you will still need to meet all other eligibility requirements for CIFRA, which are work for an employer with five or more employees, have worked at least one year at your current job, and have worked at least 1,250 hours for that employer in the past year. Paid family leave income is only available to care for a parent, spouse, sibling, grandparent, grandchild, 
parent-in-law or domestic partner. A frequently asked question we receive is what is considered a serious health condition under paid family leave, the California Family Rights Act, or the Family Medical Leave Act. Most commonly, a serious health condition covered by the above laws and benefits includes these types of conditions. One, requiring an overnight stay in a hospital or other medical care facility. Two, incapacitating you or a family member, unable to attend work or school for more than three days and requiring ongoing treatment, including doctor's visits or prescription medication. And three, chronic conditions that cause periodic incapacitation like migraines, asthma, etc. Now, onto the eligibility requirements for CIFRA and FMLA. Again, it is one year on the job, have worked 1,250 hours in the prior year, so about 25 hours a week, and work at an employer with five or more employees. Your rights under CIFRA and FMLA are 12 weeks per year that can be taken all at once or intermittently, restored to same or equivalent job, continuation of health benefits, and protection from discrimination and retaliation. To notify your employer that you are taking time off under CIFRA, you do not need to complete an application to be protected by CIFRA, but you do need to notify your employer that you are taking time off. It is best to notify your employer in writing. You can find sample letters on our resources slide at the end of this video. Now that we have talked about wage replacement and job protection, how do wage replacement and job protection laws work together for an eligible worker? In this visual, you can see how wage replacement and job protection work for a caregiver who is eligible for both PFL and CIFRA. The caregiver has eight weeks of wage replacement and job protected caregiving leave. But as you see, caregiving under PFL ends at eight weeks. But under CIFRA, they would still have an additional four weeks of unpaid but job protected leave. Now, if you do not qualify for job protection, you can still use paid family leave as long as you pay into the state disability insurance fund. You can ask your employer to hold your job while you are on leave. Unfortunately, though, your employer is not legally obligated to hold your job while you are on leave. New rights as of January 1st, 2023. All employees working for an employer with five or more employees and who have been employed for at least 30 days will be eligible for up to five days of unpaid but job protected bereavement leave. The employee may use vacation, personal leave, and sick leave as compensation for the time off. The employee can use a bereavement leave all at once or in parts within three months of the death of the family member. A family member is defined as a spouse, child, sibling, parent, grandparent, grandchild, domestic partner, or parent-in-law. An employer may not treat their employee worse for requesting or using their five days of bereavement leave. Documentation may be requested by the employer. Employees can provide multiple types of documentation. There are multiple steps to ensure your right. Talk to your doctor and or medical provider. Talk to your employer. Talk to the Employment Development Department, also known as the EDD, and document your communication. Make sure to get everything in writing so that there is a record of it. And now moving on to our resources, we have our payfamilyleave.org website that is available in both English and Spanish, where you can find information on pay leave, know your rights, and how to advocate with us. The next resource is our Know Your Rights Toolkit that focuses on pay leave in California, and it is available in English, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, and Vietnamese. Our newest resource is the Resource Hub, which can be found on our workfamilyca.org website, where you can find more information on paid leave and more short videos focused on different reasons to take paid leave. And finally, in this last resource slide, we have hyperlinked many helpful resources focused on paid leave, resources for parents, caregivers, and your own serious health condition, and resources from the EDD. The slides will be linked in the description for everyone to be able to access. Now, if you have any questions, you can find the coalition's contact information on our website at workfamilyca.org. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this Know Your Rights video.